well-known places in Oklahoma that are supposedly haunted, especially in Guthrie. The Black Jail is one of Guthrie's most popular claims to fame. Guthrie, Oklahoma became the home of the first territorial jail. Located at what is today at the intersection of 2nd and Noble Avenue, the small prison opened its doors in 1892. This building was one of the very first federal prisons to make its home in the Midwest. Originally, it was two stories and had a flat roof. It could hold 90 prisoners. It received its name the Black Jail by its inmates due to its thick, dark limestone and brick walls. Adding to the grim look was an iron cage attached to the outside of the main entrance and had a steep iron staircase to match. Near the bottom of the set of stairs was a tiny barred window that is still there to this very day. This housed what some claim to be a special cell for female prisoners, mostly prostitutes. Overall, the building exuded a very bleak and malignant overall feel, some saying it resembled a sinister fortress left behind from the Middle Ages. Much like how Titanic claimed it was unsinkable and sank, the jail was supposedly designed as inescapable, but 14 inmates managed to get loose in July of 1986. The infamous Bill Doolin was one of these 14 Houdinis. Territorial Prison was built in 1892. It sits at the corner of Noble and First Street in Guthrie uh, and housed uh, the well, territorial until um, 1924. It became a church and uh, later became a teen center for the city of Guthrie. So for pretty basic. at the federal or the territorial jail was Bill Doolin and he actually escaped from the jail along with some other of uh, his counterparts in 1896. There was a religious group that was in the uh, what, what was the territorial jail for a number of years and one of their uh, founders disappeared mysteriously and they actually found him in another state so he wasn't uh, that we know of knocked off in the jail. Um, there is a story about uh, an inmate who died in the jail when he saw the gallows being built. The, the uh, doctors thought that the fright of it had actually scared him to death. But, but other than that, those are the only two that I know of. The paranormal is no stranger here. For decades, people have said they have had the feeling that they are being watched and followed by unseen forces when near the building. Not very long after the prison opened its doors, it closed them and a Nazarene church seized the building and attempted to turn the structure into a place of worship. They completely remodeled the old jail till, till it was totally unrecognizable. The church occupied the building till the 1970s. From then on till the 90s, the building sat empty and desolate. The Samaritan Foundation later adopted it as their new cult home. They turned it into a sort of commune for their members. Rumors of rituals and ceremonies spread across the town. The Foundation was no stranger to heinous crimes, even crimes such as murder. And later, in the 1990s, the structure was deemed unfit for living by the DHS. Perhaps the haunting had something to do with that. The ghost of a man by the name of James Phillips still haunts these prison walls. Phillips was condemned to hang on a hot summer's day in June of 1907, just across the street from the prison. He had murdered a local man and was said to be the first white man to be hanged. According to public records, he observed from his window the preparation of the gallows he was to be hanged from later that day. All of a sudden, he collapsed and was pronounced dead on the site. Witnesses said he had died from fright. His ghost is rumored to still pace the corridors of the building awaiting his fate, and there have been frequent spottings of a man peering out the windows at the now abandoned building and dark shadows passing by his cell that he was supposedly kept in, although he is not the only suspected spirit that still haunts those walls. Many people have reported sightings of a young woman wearing a long flowing dress with a wide-brimmed hat and donning gloves walking around the perimeter of the structure. She can be heard singing through the main level of the old jail building and is seen attempting to cross the street by multiple drivers. She looked like a civilized woman walking with her head high into the church doors. No one knows who she is, but some suspect she was a prostitute that occupied the jail 
or perhaps a member of the Nazarene church. The woman will forever remain another mystery of the building. Ghoulie, which stands for Ghost Haunts of Oklahoma and Urban Legend Investigation, conducted a paranormal investigation of the territorial jail in Guthrie. We contacted the Oklahoma City area representative to try to get more information and the investigator agreed to an email interview, which didn't produce much information. The investigator said, when I was there, it was rather dangerous. I was assigned to write about it from an author. The book is called Ghostly Tales from America's Jails. She then directed us to the Ghoulie website where the account of the investigation is archived. The webpage gives a history of the black jail and then the very last paragraph describes the investigation. It says, while being able to research the location, visit, and spend some time inside the walls of the prison, I personally witnessed a few unexplainable moments. Walking up the main floor of the prison, I noticed a large hole in the floor peering into the basement. I stopped walking to observe and take some photos. Lightly behind me, I hear a few dragging footsteps lingering. I was truly startled because I was wearing soft sole shoes. Another experience that caught my attention was while I was in the basement photographing James Phillips' cell. I noticed what appeared to be a man walking across the window. In hopes that it was one of the volunteer workers, I rushed up the frayed stairs to speak interview him. Running to the front door, I stepped outside, looked up the street and around, and there was no one in sight. While standing in the cell block hallway of the basement, my associates and I were startled of the sound of metal hitting metal, similar to the closing of a cell block door. There's only one metal door left in the prison, and that door was about three feet in front of us, within our view. We searched for another door, and with no luck at all, we were not able to locate the origin of the noise or recreate the noise with any debris in the area. The sense of being followed and the strong sense of being watched was the most uncomfortable event we witnessed that day. There is no doubt in my mind that the Black Jail of Guthrie, Oklahoma could be one of the more haunted locations in this glorious historical town. The investigator said, It was just me and a couple of my friends during the day. We had standard gear with us, nothing fancy. EVPs we collected are posted on the web page as well. Based on the investigator's account of the investigation, we will assume that standard gear is simply a digital camera and an audio recorder. Or maybe it is something like this ghost hunting kit that is for sale on Amazon. This is everything that you need to get started in paranormal research such as an EMF reader, which detects changes in the electromagnetic field, and an infrared thermometer, which detects changes in the temperature. Changes in temperature and in the electromagnetic field are purported to signal a paranormal presence. Infrared thermometers are used to detect surface temperatures. However, since ghosts do not have a surface, how can an infrared thermometer detect its temperature? EMF meters detect electromagnetic fields, which always require some sort of energy source. And since ghosts are dead, they have no energy. However, the Ghoulie investigators only used a digital camera and maybe a digital voice recorder. The Ghoulie investigators captured two EVPs while in the black jail. One of them is supposed to be a man's voice saying, right, and the other is indiscernible. EVP stands for Electronic Voice Phenomena, and they are supposedly the disembodied voices of ghosts or paranormal spirits. EVPs are considered to be prime paranormal evidence, and ghost hunters love it when they catch one. First and foremost, anecdotes are not evidence. Second, many things could go wrong with the digital camera. Pictures that are claimed to be paranormal could just be because of dust, insects, optical illusions, or a number of other things. Finally, an audio recorder could pick up all types of stray noises. And as humans, we are prone to make these noises out to be meaningful, interpreting them to be voices or words. All in all, there has been no scientific evidence that the black jail in Guthrie is still inhabited 
by prisoners of days past. But who doesn't want to believe?